بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد فاجمل ما أغلق وقاجم لما سبق ناس الحق بالحق والحادي إلى شراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طيب welcome to the introductory class video to our new um, endeavor for Faith Institute and our readings on the biographies of great West African Islamic scholars. And we wanted to put this together for some time now uh, because we deemed that it would be beneficial for the Muslim community at large and for the black Muslim community in particular to become exposed to what normally would be unknown people or unknown personalities in history and we bring them to the forefront so that you can learn about their biographies, learn about their lives and, uh, and take some benefit from them in terms of how they lived, what they did, the legacy. And this would, in, inshallah, incur a lot of sense, a sense of, of pride, a sense of, of confidence, uh, particularly in the African-American Muslim community, about, the, about their Islamic heritage. At the same time, there's a lot of blessing in reading the tabakat or the biographies of our past illuminaries. It's a tradition that the ulama in Islam have always, uh, have always had. We have tabakat, biographies of, of many different categories of people. Uh, the tabakat of grammarians, tabakat of Hanafis, tabakat of Shafis, tabakat of Malikis, tabakat of Sufis. We have the tabakat of, of great Egyptian scholars, tabakat of great scholars from Syria, um, great, uh, different, different categories. People of fiqh, tabakat of people of hadith, tabakat of the Ahlu Qura, the people of, of the Qura, of the Quran recitations. And so there's a lot of blessing in reading their biographies, as we said, because from reading their biographies, we get advice, we get examples on how to live, examples on what it is uh, to see someone who has completed their salute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, we discover new things that certain books were written or so-and-so scholar, he left, he wrote a commentary on this particular book, or he wrote a tafsir of Quran, or he did this and he did that. And this gives us inspiration. Um, it gives us insight into those books that are important because we see that certain books were always studied by most of the scholars. And so that would incite us and motivate us to in turn go and to study those books, those same books. So inshallah, I thought that it was important that um, for the Institute, we put this together. And there, in this series, um, what we want to do is probably every weekend, is just take one personality, uh, one figure, and read about him, short biographies, no longer than 30 minutes, and we'll pull from different resources that we have. Um, we have um, the Fatha Shukur, the Ma'arifat al Ayan al Ulama al Taqroor. Naam, this is a very famous book um, and it, about the Ulama from the Taqroor region, which is synonymous with West, with West Africa. Naam, it's from West. Um, so, this book, as well as there were two books by Sheikh Ahmed Baba at Timbukti who wrote um, 
two books that stemmed from the biographies of the Maliki scholars, from a book called the Adi Baj that was written by Ibn Furhaun. And Ahmed Bamba a Timbukti, he wrote two books on the scholars that were not included in the original Dibaj. So those two books, as well as the Tariq al-Sudan of Imam Sa'adi, Abdurrahman Sa'adi, and the Tariq of Fattash by Imam Mahmoud Ka'ati, as well as the Infaq al-Maysur fi Tariq al-Bilad al-Taqroor by Muhammad Bello, the son of Shehu Usman Dan Furio. These last three books that I mentioned are ex extremely important in learning the history of West Africa, of Islam in West Africa. They are three of the four pivotal books in uh, primary sources in learning about Islamic history of West Africa. <clears throat> So inshallah, all of these scholars will be, that we will select, will be uh, black African scholars who contributed a great deal to the legacy and the tradition of Islam. And we're going to begin today with, and I think this is befitting, with the first personality from the book Al-Fatha Shukur. Uh, in knowing the, the ulama of the Takrori region. This is a book by Burtuli. And in the introduction, which I'm not going to read, but in the introduction, he also said the same thing that about biographies, that people have written biographies on different groups of people, and there was no biography about the, the ulama of the, West, of, of the Takrori region, which is considered West Africa. <clears throat> now, so this is the region from West Africa, which we extended probably um, from Morocco at the time, which was which was which was now which is now Morocco, um, the Western Sahara, all into Mauritania and Senegal, all into um, the coast down to the coast of West Africa. Now, these were, this region was very rich in, in Islamic scholarship, Islamic trade between groups of people, North and South. Um, there were many different groups, many different personalities and regions that, um, that, uh, the, that are in, chronicled in the annals of history. So the first, uh, and these books are usually, uh, the books of Tabakat are usually organized by uh, by letter, by the first letter of the person's name. So Harful Aleph will be the first chapter, and in it will, will contain all of those scholars whose names began with Ahmed. Okay, Ahmed. And then he goes on, and Harful Ba, and, and on and on. And um, so it's not in a particular order of importance, but matter but rather an order of the first letter by name. And so what we'll do, we're not going to cover every single personality here, but we will pick and choose week to week the ones that we want to discuss. So we'll skip over the books. Sometimes we'll go from one book to another. Sometimes we'll stay within a book for a period of time and, and, and skip from chapter to chapter, um, depending on you know, how we see fit. No, so inshallah, this is our intention, and, and our intention is to, first and, and foremost to seek the face and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, that's, that's, the form, that's the first thing. And that we intend by seeking this type of knowledge to get close to Allah. So if we read about the people of Allah, the people who live their lives in service and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in turn, we, inshallah, we will be, this will give us a model by which to follow 
and seeking him as well in our lives. So the first person, I think it's fitting that we look at a person, a scholar from, the, from Timbuktu, which, was, which is today in, in Mali, right? the famous Timbuktu University, that region there. His name was Al-Hajj Ahmed ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Aqit ibn Umar ibn Yahya Aqidala Aqidala to San Haji Atim Bukti. And he was the judge of Sayyidi Ahmed Baba. He was the grandfather of Ahmed Baba Atim Bukti, who was the, the famous scholar from Timbuktu, who most people, many people know of. Um, he's not as well known um, across other regions in, in the world. But among uh, um, those um, students of, of history in, in Africa, in West Africa, Islam in Africa, he's, he's probably the most famous of all. And this is his grandfather, okay, Al Haj Ahmed ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Aqid. Yu'raf uh, ibn Haj Ahmed, he was known as Al Haj Ahmed. أَخْبَرُوا إِخْوَةِ ثَلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ أَشْتَهَرُوا عِلْمًا وَدِينًا فِي كَتُرِهِمْ So he was the third of, he was the, um, the third oldest brother of, of, of a famous group of families who were very well known for their knowledge and their deen and their regions. And أَهْلَ الْخَيْرِ وَالْفَضَلِ وَالْعِلْمُ وَالَّذِينَ وَالْعِلْمُ وَالْدِينِ And he was uh, from the people of goodness. And, and virtue, and knowledge, and knowledge of the deen. Okay, he was a great scholar. Muhafidan ala sunnati wa maru'ati wa siyanata wa takhri. So he was a great uh, uh, protector of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and had high virtuous moral character, okay, and was very um, protective of, uh, of doing his, his research studies. And he was as, as well known to be an avid student of knowledge. Muhibban lil Nabiji sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He was known to be a lover of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Mulajiman lil Qara'ati fi Sa'adi Madihi. So he was, it was always required for him to recite the, the Qasa'id of praise of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This was something that he was known for. He was always consistently reading the Shifa, the book Shifa, uh, which was a book by Qadi Iyad, which is extremely famous and well known um, about the virtue and the rights of the Prophet. Lugawiyan, Urudiyan. And he was a he was a faqih. He was a Nahwi, he was a grammarian, a person of fiqh. He was a person of grammar, a scholar of grammar, a scholar of language and pro and poetry. Naam, and he sought knowledge and he gave knowledge. He taught knowledge over the extensive span of his life. Fakatiba Kutban. Fakatiba Kutban Adidatan Bikatihi. And he he authored numerous books by his own hand. SubhanAllah. It's a shame that we don't I would love to have some of his books. Um, but again, you know, in Africa they didn't have the printing press like they did eventually in other parts of the world. So a lot of the books in Africa, in West Africa, and the Islamic scholarship were, um, were kept in manuscripts and were never really published for the, for the world to, to see. Ma'afawa'idi kathira. So his books had a, had a great benefit to them. nahu sabah amiyatun mujallid. And he left about, it's said that he left about 
um, 700 volumes of works. Wow, subhanAllah. Imagine that type of having that in your library. I would love to have that in my library. About 700 volumes of work. And uh, and uh, Muhammad, okay, so his mother, a faqih, was a faqih, and her name, Andagum Muhammad, so, so he took knowledge from his, from his grandfather, okay, and to his mother. And Khalihi, and Khalihi, faqihi, Mukhtar a Nahwi, and from his uncle, who was a faqih as well, and was named Mukhtar al Nahwi, and others as well, others from his family. So he came from a family of scholars. This was the tradition in West Africa that people in the family Islamic scholarship was what was considered the highest form of of provision. It was given a person the highest status in society. Knowledge was regarded more than money, more than anything. It was knowledge of the deen, being a person of high status meant that you were a person of knowledge. And um, this is something that in today's era uh, has been reversed. SubhanAllah. So Al Haj Ahmed Rumuhullah Wahajjafi Ahmad Sisain with the Mana uh with the Mani with the and he made Hajj. He made Hajj to the to the house of Mecca. In the year uh eight hundred and ninety. Wallahiya Jalal Suyuti, subhanAllah. And he met Imam Jalal al-Din Suyuti. Imagine, imagine. The grandfather of Ahmed Baba, Ahmed, Ahmed uh, Al-Hajj Ahmed, he met on Hajj, he met Jalal al-Din Suyuti. Wa Shaykh Khalidan al-Azhari, Imam al-Nahu. He also met Shaykh Khalidan uh, Khalid Al Azhari, who was the Imam of Grammar, of Grammar, okay, and he met others in Ahl al Bilad al Sudan. He met others from the land of the Sudan. Ajib. Now, I don't know if he's saying here that Imam Suyuti was, uh, we know Imam Suyuti, he's from, he's from, the, from the, the Bilad of Sudan. In that region, uh, where Sudan, that Bilad of Sudan, uh, uh, that he's talking about, uh, Imam Suti was from Egypt, from Cairo. So he met others from the Bilad of Sudan that was known as the land of the blacks. It was known that the Arabs and the East gave the term for the Arab, for the blacks, black people coming from West Africa, the Bilad of Sudan. And it was normally that area, that region that was south of the Sahara Desert. No, it wasn't the Nilotic Sudan that we have today that evolved after colonialism. But it, then it was Bilad Sudan, the land of the blacks. This is a highly respected, a rich in Islamic culture and Islamic heritage, um, and Islamic scholarship, intellectual scholarship during that time. Now, Wadarasa Ilmu wa Afad. He said that the Sheikh uh, Al Haj Ahmed, he he taught knowledge and benefit and 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 beneficial things to students. When when Tafa Abihi, Jama Akathir, and many people benefited from him. Many people benefited from him. If you know that time, Timbuktu was one of the great learning centers of the world one of the great learning centers for Islam in the world. وَأَجَلُّهُمْ فَقِيهِ مَحْمُودٍ قَرَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَدَوْمُنَا وَغَيْرَهَا Now, so he sat 
and learn from his teacher, uh, uh, or actually one of the, one of his greatest students was was uh, the Faqih. His name was uh, was Mahmoud, the Faqih, the Faqih Mahmoud. Okay, and he took from him. Uh, he took from him the Mudawana. In other words, he read with him or studied with him the Mudawana and other things. وَغَيْرَهَا وَاجْتَحِدَ فِي الْعِلْمِ دَارِسًا وَتَحْصِيلًا Now, so he, he persevered and struggled in, in knowledge, in teaching and studying knowledge, and acquiring knowledge during his lifetime, his whole lifetime. Now, وَطَلَبُ لِلْإِمَامَةِ فِي الْجَامِعَةِ فِي الْجَامِعِ وَنَاسِ فَأَبَى And that people came from the... Uh, from the jama, okay, to seek him to be the imam, and he refused. He refused. This was a, a hallmark of people of knowledge at the time. They didn't seek uh, fame. They didn't seek position. They shied away from those type of positions, um, which was a, a quality for someone to be qualified for the position that they didn't have to want it. It wasn't from their own hawa that they took these positions. And, and so he, he refused. He didn't want the position. Now, he says, Fadlan an ghayraha. That he, out of his virtue, he saw that others would seek the position in his place. ومن مشهور كراماته أنه لما زار قبر شريف طلب الدخول دخول إلى داخله فمنعه خدام منه سبحان الله. So from his karamat and karamat were favors that were given to them as awliya from Allah subhanahu wa taala that he would visit the the grave the, of the the قبر الشريف of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he would seek admission therein. And his admission at the door would be refused. He was not let, he was not allowed to enter. He wasn't allowed to enter until he sat. So he sat outside the door of the Qabr Sharif and he recited the praises of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. SubhanAllah. فَانْحَلَّ لَهُ الْبَابِ وَحْدَهُ بِلَا تَسَبَّبَ فَبَادِرُ لِتَقْبِلَ يَدِهِ Ajeeb. So he occupied the door alone and without, medi without a mediator or, medi uh, or a middle, a, middle uh, a mediator that his hand extended and the Prophet's hand was extended to him. Kala Hafid, Kala Ahmed Baba, his grandson, Ahmed Baba, the famous Ahmed Baba, he said, Hakada Sumitu Hakayata An Min Jamaati. He said, and like this, he said he heard this from numerous members uh, uh, of, of, of the group about his grandfather. Tawafi rahimahullah layla tan juma'a fi rabi'i thani aam thalatha wa arba'een wa tis'amiyya an nahwi thamaneen as-suna thamaneen as-suna Naam, so he he died rahimahullah on the night of Juma'a in rabi'i thani in the year thalatha wa arba'een uh, 43, which is Amiya, 943. Okay. Now, So he was 80, about 80 years old. Rahimahullah. SubhanAllah. So we see that uh, um, the benefit here is being inspired and being inspired by the lives of these 
these great awliya and talking about them and just mentioning their names, inshallah, is barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are honored to, to learn about Al-Hajj Ahmed, the grandfather of the grandfather of Ahmed Baba. Again, his name Al-Hajj Ahmed ibn Umar ibn Muhammad Aqid. Asan Haji a Timbukti. May Allah be pleased with him. And so like this, we will take a personality every weekend. Um, sometimes even, inshallah, we'll post, um, post the classes um, during the week. And uh, depending on our schedule, and inshallah, we look for them on our YouTube channel. They will be posted on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and that you can uh, view all of our videos on the playlist. And for this class, we will have them to the playlist entitled Readings and the Biographies of Great West African Islamic Scholars. So with that, inshallah, we'll end. Subhana rabbika rabbi izzat al-amma yashifun wa salamun ala mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.